even his name conjures up images of greatness and controversy. Bill Reed's legacy is cemented as the author of the Renaissance of Northwest Coast art. He championed its rebirth effortlessly as he re-established the radiant work of the Haida. Bill Reed, the most famous and influential Northwest Coast artist in our time, died on March 13, 1998, after a 30-year struggle with Parkinson's disease. Bill came to the museum, and before this building exists now, basically informed the curator at that time he was Haida and he wanted to learn more about it. And recognizing that Haida art was still produced, but there was a sense of Haida art that was produced in the late 1800s. At some point in his career, he decided that's what he wanted to bring back, was that quality of Haida art from that time period. A lot of people feel when they think of First Nations art, they just think solely of Bill Reed. People look at the whole Northwest Coast Renaissance and, and uh, well, why was Bill the head of the Renaissance? I think someone like Robert Davidson would be the Michelangelo of that Renaissance, but Bill Reed would be the Leonardo because he was a real inventor. Bill is sort of stretched between, you know, contemporary art and traditional art and traditional apprenticeship. Bill Reed was born in Victoria, BC in 1920. Although in his early years he was unaware of his Haida ancestry, Reed's own upbringing was cross-cultural. His father, William, was of Scottish-German heritage and his mother, Haida, from the Raven clan. His mother was fairly strict in terms of his upbringing and, and becoming a good craftsman, whether he's being crafted as an announcer, a radio announcer, or, or as he got into the, the art form. At the age of 23, Bill first set foot on Haida Gwaii, visiting Skidigit. When he went to his uh, grandfather's funeral, Charles Gladstone's funeral, is when the first time he's seen Charles Eden Chaiyi's bracelet. When Reed left high school, he became a radio announcer for CBC. While in Toronto, he often visited the Royal Ontario Museum to see an old totem pole. Ironically, the pole was originally from his mother's village of Tanu. Reed went on to study jewelry making at Ryerson and in 1951 he returned to Vancouver. Perhaps it was the rugged mountains and the vast wilderness of the West Coast that rekindled his interest in his Haida heritage. Bill worked not within the Haida tradition of learning from your uncle, but he learned from the ethnologists, from, from the Wilson Duffs of the world as well. And that was, that was a really important thing for Bill was to uh, look at the old pieces and, and capture every piece of detail of you know, what made it a great piece of work. Reed began creating brilliant works in silver and gold. Certainly he was very comfortable in doing the jewelry and probably could have enjoyed staying in that, that realm, but he recognized the, um, the scale that you could do something a few inches across and take that same work and turn it into something as many feet across. In the museum, you know, the, the first raven and the first man is actually a little tiny boxwood that you can hold in your hand, and that's the original. So there's a pole that Bill Reed carved with Doug Kramer about 1960. The bottom figure is a killer whale, and you can see the face in the blowhole. And then um, the dorsal fin is folded back. The flukes are turned back on itself. Reed continued to transform Haida art by embracing new techniques, such as bronze, when he was creating his monumental pieces of art. Probably the, the most well-known international piece of Bill's is the Spirit of Haida Gwaii. And that was commissioned for the uh, new Canadian Embassy in Washington, D.C. And then a second casting was made from the mold, which is now in the Vancouver International Airport. It was such a fusion of Western and First Nations principles. And, and I think that's why his work is so important, because it, it, broke, it broke ice in that area. The spirit of the Haida Gwaii features raven and eagle, the two principal Haida lineages that are co-equal. He was simply involved in the power of human expression and, and accomplishment. In my mind, I think Bill Reed achieved more for the Haida art world during the time that he was not accepted by his own people. His desire to reclaim his heritage wasn't met with open arms by his community. Acceptance is a loaded word. 
who you want to be accepted by. By people that don't like you? Why? They don't even know you and they don't like you. And I think there was so much going on with Bill that I think it's going to take a while to sift through it all. In 1985, he got his status back, as did most of the non-status in Charlotte. But it was almost too late. He'd already lived his life as, a, as an urban native with really no connection. And I could relate to that because I'm in the same boat. One of the most important legacies that Bill left was the, the character of the quality and the, and the detail and care that's put into Northwest Coast art in making a masterpiece.